Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carbigato. Welcome to today. It is Friday, March the 10th. Oh my goodness. I am so super beyond blessed today. And the scripture that God is going to have me bring to encourage you, it is going to be like one of your favorites this year. So as you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. Our God is a mighty God. And oh my goodness, I am beyond blessed at the revelation God has given me for chapter three of the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease. And I'm going to guard that pearl until the book is released because it is that massive. I didn't think God could top mindfulness, the mind of Christ Jesus in the next book that I would write. But oh my goodness, this book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease is by far the best book I've written, and I cannot wait till it gets into your hands this year. And also, I will be bringing you half of the book will be on post-traumatic stress disorder, and you will have such tools and equipment to address that in your members, in your mind and body. Amen. Hey, Miss Donna, I love you. You are so precious. Hey, Dina. Hey, Beck Cook. I see y'all on here as well as Christina. God bless you. Praying for your daughter, Christina. And so I'm going to get into such an amazing scripture that Holy Spirit put on my heart today. And God was speaking to me about Psalm 20. I absolutely love the prelude into Psalm 20, which is Psalm 19. And I've written about Psalm 19, especially even in Mindfulness and Mind of Christ, as well as other books. I think Destiny might even be mentioned in that book. But it is one of my favorite Psalms. And today we're going to go into Psalm 20. And so if I could summarize Psalm 19, it is about the glory being revealed in Jesus Christ who would come to the earth and run his race, finishing it with great grace, bringing God's sons and daughters salvation. It is such an amazing psalm. And now we're going to go into Psalm 20, and it is going to be such a blessing. I encourage you to let this psalm be one of your prayers each and every month for the rest of this year. It is so powerful. And God loves for us to pray to him scripture. And I would say Psalm 20 is definitely one of those. And so as we look at Psalm 20, I'm going to talk about praise and the power of praise. I love the word hallelujah because it means high praise. And that high praise comes from your soul and your spirit man that worships the Lord in spirit and in truth because you've come into the knowledge of how amazing our God is. Amen. I think about the seraphim in Isaiah 6 as they continually cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of his glory. See, the seraphim can see in the invisible realm greater than you and I can see. And they see the knowledge of God's glory. Imagine what happens to us as the eyes of our heart, Ephesians 1.18, are opened and the light of truth floods the eyes of our heart. And we have the knowledge of God's glory and how amazing he is. It is those hallelujah moments. And those hallelujah moments are where there is power in your praise. And that is called thanksgiving. It is an offering unto God, an offering of thanksgiving. That thanksgiving draws God closer to earth. And I cannot help but think of the power of, of Malachi 3. So before I'm going to read Psalm 20, oh my goodness, Holy Spirit's just giving me more scriptures. I'm going to read Malachi 3. And what is super amazing, God kept telling me to tell each and every one of you on here that no matter what you're going through, it is going to be all right. 
and you have to commit prayer and trust every circumstance into the Lord's hands. Amen. So I'm going to read Malachi 3, verses 1 through 5 or 4, verses 1 through 4. And I want you to listen at how God draws near to us, even as James says, that as we draw near to God, let's draw to him, near to him, uh, James 4, 8, with repentance. And as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. Let me make sure that scripture address. It is James 4, 8. I was right. I just want to make sure. I always want to make sure you have the right address. And so listen to Malachi 3. And this is actually one of the Watchmen training workbooks that I wrote that will eventually come out as a book in the Watchmen series at some point. Malachi 3 verse 1 out of the Amplified Classic. Behold, I send my messenger. And this is the little M talking about John the Baptist. And he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, the Messiah, whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger, big M, who is Jesus. And I have Malachi 1 through 3 also in the book, Mindfulness, the Mind of Christ. And it is phenomenal as it tells you the inner workings of ex extra intercellular activity showing you Jesus Christ leaving his throne of glory and coming to earth. It is so powerful. So listen to verse 1 again. Behold, I send my messenger, little M, John the Baptist, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, the Messiah whom you seek, will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger, big M, of the covenant whom you desire. Behold, he shall come, says the Lord of hosts. Whenever you see the Lord of hosts in scripture, it is about the power of the message. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the priests, the sons of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord offerings of righteousness then will the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, as the ancient years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. Now, judgment means a decision. It is a decision for, which is what we get in the name of Jesus, or decision against. That is why it is so important to keep your heart pure, to be quick to repent, to be quick to forgive, and to really be circumspect and walk in wisdom as you remain humble. Oh my goodness, I love those moments of humility. There are so many times that God would have me humble myself as I would repent to others. And I can tell you, it is the most precious thing. I remember over a year and a half ago when there was an issue with someone that I was in close relationship with, and I really had to humble myself before them and repent. And the Holy Spirit came into my heart and brought the word and cut into it deeply and divided between my intents and my motives and oh, it did not sting. It did not hurt. That cut was beautiful. Why? Because it brought the high praise, the thanksgiving of Jesus Christ, and the purification that God brings us as we are sons and daughters of God, and we look like that image of His glory 2 Corinthians 3.18, revealed in his word of truth, who is Christ Jesus, the word, amen. And so as you have this high praise and you just give it unto God, I am telling you, he draws closer to you. 
He wants to be near you. And oh my, the time of his favor. I keep hearing that it is the appointed time, the set time for God's favor. As scripture says in, let me get the verse. It is, hold on, what's, uh, Psalm 102, 13. Let me read that before I read Psalm 20. Oh my goodness. I pray that today's message is absolutely blessing you as much as it is blessing me because I am super blessed by this message. I'm glad I showed up today. And so Psalm 102 verse 13, and here you will see Sion, which is Zion. And Zion in Hebrew means a signpost, a way mark. In other words, those marked by God, by his covenant, by the Holy Spirit, by the salvation in Jesus Christ for us. Amen. Verse 13, Psalm 102, the Amplified Classic. You will arise and have mercy and loving kindness for Zion. For it is time to have pity and compassion for her. Yes, the set time has come. The moment designated. This is the set time of God's favor. And so here we're going to end with Psalm 20 as God brings you confidence and assurance of what he is doing in this hour. And you release such high praise, such thanksgiving that it just causes him to draw near to you. Amen. Psalm 20, the Amplified Classic. This is a Psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob set you on high and defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary and support, refresh and strengthen you from Zion. Remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. Say la, pause and think of that. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. We will shout in triumph at your salvation and victory. And in the name of our God, we will set up banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chair, but some trust in and boast of chariots and some of horses, but we will trust in and boast of the name of the Lord our God. They are bowed down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. O Lord, give victory and let the king answer us when we call. Saints, it is the set time of God's favor. And he is about to do something new. He is about to bring change. Good morning, Sue. And so I, God told me to look at verse 5 where it says that we will lift our banners. That is the Hebrew word dagal. And that word means to raise a flag. It means to be conspicuous. It means to set up banners. And it means chiefest. It comes in the package of three olive bit letters. Dalet, Gamil, and Lamed. Oh, let me tell you about the ancient symbols and the word picture that this composes. It is so powerful. And it brings it to your members, your heart, and your mind. And it just lifts you up in a firm confidence of who God is and that he is for you. Amen. And so the Hebrew letter Dalet, the ancient symbol is a door. And it means to enter and pathway. Gamil is the ancient symbol of a camel. And in the positive, it means to lift up. 
Lamed is a cattle goat. It looks like a shepherd's staff with a prick in the curvature, and it means tongue, control, and authority. So the word picture for banner. Are you ready? You're lifting up the banner of God. Amen. You're lifting up the banner of praise, the banner of triumph. The word picture is entering through the door onto the path as you are lifted up into his authority, into his tongue, and it has control over everything concerning you. Listen to this again. It is absolutely powerful. Where the door is opened and you enter into the path that you are lifted up into God's authority, into his tongue, controlling everything concerning your life. Oh, saints, there is power in intention. And when you have the intention of God, it's because you have his attention. Woo! Do you hear this? Hallelujah. Oh, there's the high praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you have God's attention, it's because all of your attention is on him. And you have his attention because you have that high praise. And you enter into a God intention in your life. Saints, God has intended for you to prosper in life and in health. 3 John 1, 2, as your soul prospers. I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, and our Father, God who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, that his kingdom come, his will be done in your life. As it is done in heaven, it will be done in earth. In the name of Jesus, and we praise you, God, for this. We say yes and amen, so be it. In Jesus' name, God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing Friday.